All right, I got the rug on the windshield just in case. I'm slinging a rock or something, I won't break it, hopefully. I got it out that far. It's about as far as I can get it. I wish this thing was four wheel drive. Tomorrow I'll come out with the Dodge. It's not four wheel drive either, but maybe it's got enough weight on it. It's got some pretty meaty tires, but not quite like that. Or we'll get Gabe to come out with his tractor. <clears throat> Either way, it's time for me to go in. I'm just about dead. I need to get some hydration. I've got some electrolyte in there, so I'll drink it. But that's it for this day. I'll be back out tomorrow. All right, so this is Saturday. Last night, I finally got the damn thing out of where it was and drug home. Now, I should have, Thursday, I should have just taken Casper and went out there and didn't even bother with the Jeep because the Jeep, um, I couldn't quite get enough traction even with the knobby tires to pull it out. But this, I had no problems. That SP2P manifold is horrible. I put it on there because it's supposed to help torque in mileage. And I had it. I thought it would be better than running the cast iron one. Uh, when I had it on Old Red, my 70 short wide, literally 4,200 RPM is as much as you could get out of the engine with that manifold. I never plan on going that much with the tow truck, so I didn't think it was a problem. But there were times where I had a foot to the floor and the wheels weren't spinning and it wasn't pulling this on dirt and grass. But it got it out. It got it out without a problem. A couple things did happen. Um, I got the trailer high centered at one point because I was trying to miss a washout. And that wasn't a big deal. But the first thing that happened is I pulled this into the side of a Rambler. So I didn't notice it. And I should have stopped, but I kept trying to pull it. And I ended up doing this kind of damage. The fender doesn't matter because the fender's a junk, but the door. And I can fix that. Uh, this wheel is still locked up. It's my mercury tail light so i think i've decided now this guy's just got one little nut and bolt holding this thing on there but uh these seem to fit pretty well so i think i'm going to find another one and go with them because they look cool they look a lot cooler than that and this one looks like my desoto like i'll fit my desoto anyway so i'm looking things over and this is the cover for the gauge cluster and you can see that somebody has gone through and looks like they put a screwdriver in here and pried the stuff apart. You can see right there, you can see over here where the headlight switch is, they pried this one apart. And it's like, why? Like a bunch of monkeys pounding on stuff. This being a three on the tree, it's got a cap over the push button holes. But what's really interesting is it's got this original felt. It's obviously never been used because it's just there in this rubber seal. I'll go to the push button. This door I got to work and I closed it all the way. Now I can't get it open. <sighs> anyway, so the gauge cluster. You see the gas gauge there has fallen out. I don't know what the hell somebody did. What I'm gonna probably have to do is try to swap the 61 dash into it. There's a bunch of screws underneath that headlight, that um, windshield seal. And they say you can get them out, but it's not very easy. We'll find out. And of course these fenders are all beat to hell. Uh, I brought this thing to work today so I could use the shop vac on my lunch break to suck out the mud dauber nests that are in the, por the bores. Well, it turns out the shop vac burned up. So I'll have to bring mine with me tomorrow. But I want to get all the dirt and crap out of there before I try to crank this thing over. And I got to replace the starter since it's missing. But right now, we need to get the store cleaned up so we can close it down and get back to work. So that's it for tonight. Okay, so real quick here on my lunch break. Got my shop vac. These are all full of mud dauber nests. I know, 
don't know if you can see them. Yeah, there you go. You can see in there, mud dauber. Seems like it's more of the intake ports they have the mud daubers on them. Well, that's an exhaust port with a mud dauber nest. Intake port, so I've already sucked them out. I'm going to go in with a screwdriver and have the vacuum run and, and just kind of, um, you know, poke it out around the vacuum hose and see if I can't keep as much as possible from going into cylinders. That's my goal right now. So here we go. Okay, lunch break. This is Monday, my Friday. We are going to see if this will turn over. So I got no ports in there. I've got no spark plugs in there. Hopefully it doesn't go spraying everything out of there. There's still a little floating in a lot of these ports. So it tells me that they're sealing or they're rusted shut one or the other. So let's see. bet it's this negative battery post here it's pretty corroded okay take two let's see if this will turn over over there kind of looks like one cylinder spraying anything hmm that would be amazing if this thing would run there's a reason it was junked now because I don't see any of the nuts or the spreaders down here from all the studs I'm gonna say that that stuff was removed before it ever came out there to the farm I don't know how long Jim had it in town, but it might have been junked with the manifolds missing. And so it might have something to do with why it was junked. I don't know. But this seems to be working. Yep. I think we're gold. Radiator fins don't look great to me. I don't know. I'm not planning on using this radiator anyhow. Okay, I'm gonna put some spark plugs back in it and see if we can listen to some compression. Okay, we're gonna fire this thing off and see if it will stay running, see if the transmission will shift. I need to get some water in this thing. And I've got just kind of a siphon gravity feed fuel system here. I don't really like doing that, but my little tank I had got a crack in it. So and I'm not sure if it's actually getting any fuel into it, but we will find out here in a moment. I'm going to go grab the water and we'll get started. So Tuesday, I went on a little cruise, found some items on my... Uh, marketplace. These are out of a Winnebago a B300 Class C RV. Uh, the seams are split here. The other side's in better shape, although something looks like it was dripped onto it. But other than that, I like the pattern. I like the shape. Funky, perfect for the 62. Picked up a new intake for the Wrecker. The um, SP2P that's on there is so restrictive. I mean, literally... With my old red truck, I could have it in first, second gear and 4,200 RPMs as far as it would go because it would not flow anymore. This one is supposed to be a step better than a performer power-wise. 
Drivability wise, it's still supposed to be decent. Ports are a little bigger, but it should be okay. That is a manifold set for the 62 to see if it'll run. But we're gonna get the 61 fired off right now and check the training. Oh, and the guy was cool enough. He gave me the door panels from the RV so I'd have extra material to patch that with, which I don't know if I'd need or not. But if there's enough there and I could find something else like it, I'm gonna do the door panels on the 62 that way. Anyway. Okay, fuel system's primed. Gonna hook up the power. And start her up. Oh yeah. This is what I did. Sound like it was knocking there for a second. It's actually in drive right now. Hmm. Nothing's going anywhere. It's probably out of fluid. I'm sitting. It's so cool though, it's just sitting there idling. meters working. I don't have a headlight switch to pull. I do have a wiper switch though. No wipers. Okay. No, we're in neutral. Oh. So remember that drum over there is uh this one doesn't turn. That one over there does. catching on that crossbar. See this one? Not going. Hey, speedometer works. Roughly 30. Battery's charging. I don't know about the temperature gauge. thing out of fuel, pull the hose out of the gas. 
gas charge there. Probably have to have the key turn. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's moving. Need to get all that out of there because apparently there's a row of screws underneath that seal that are pointing not straight down but actually back towards me. So. Yeah, that is not going to be fun. And there it goes. Oil light. Okay. So that's it for that. Still got water in it. I don't see anything leaking anywhere. Maybe leak some of that old nasty gas on the ground. Okay. Okay, so right now I need to pull that door panel off so I can get that wing window window track because that one is bent to hell. The window won't go up and if you try, you probably break it. So, I need to get that. Well, I got that wing window out. It was definitely not a fun job. The rubber's in really good shape. It's very pliable. I had to roll it back into its little channel. This rubber I don't think is as nice, but it's still pretty pliable. No cracks anywhere. Both of them have overspray on it. This one does too on the other side. But you can see there's some damage here. I'm not sure why. This does not have locking wing windows like this one does. Interesting. But you'll notice too that this chrome is in really bad shape. It's very, very rough. And this is actually in pretty good shape. So I'm gonna try to change all that. Yeah, see even that screw up there is green and rough. This one's rusty. The screw is anyway. I think the rest of it might polish out. Maybe, I don't know. But I need to get this out and then straighten this out, whatever's bent. I might just have to bend this little flange here back because this whole thing needs to go back. I'm not sure what happened, but it definitely happened. So let me do that and we'll be back. You know, this car sat out, last tag was 81. So I'm not sure if it sat out in the junkyard that long or if it sat in someone's driveway for 10 years before it finally ended up in the junkyard. I don't know. But this thing has a lot less rust than that one. I mean, look at this. It's still got the, the kind of zinc chromate plating. It's still kind of gold colored. There really hardly is any rust on this. But, I mean, you can see that damage there. I don't know what happened. And this is split. So the window wasn't even staying on track. You got pretty good rubber, little bit of over, overspray, much better chrome. So we're gonna change that over. I'm gonna straighten this out. I might have to take a rod and a hammer and beat that back down and get it flat. I'm gonna go look at the other car though to make sure because it wasn't molested at all. So we'll be back. All right, I got it out, got it apart. So this is the one out of the 61. You can see getting real sharp, you know, the chrome is peeling. This is really bad though. Here. 
see it peeling around there. So, same thing going on here. That's not, you're not gonna clean that up very well. So, I'm gonna save it just in case this one gets broke. But, you know, this one, you can see it was in a lot better shape. A little crazy, but it'll, most of it will polish out. And we don't have a lock, but that's all right. And hey, at least it'll match that side. So, I'm gonna go ahead and hit this, straighten it out a bit, and then I'll put the window all back together. Okay, I got this straightened out. Got it lined up. I'm not sure if it's supposed to kick up like that, but it looks fine to me. It almost seems like it has a bow to it, but it lines up with the outside just fine. So, eh, who cares? I was thinking about painting them, but I think I'm just gonna leave them. I'm gonna leave the patina, but I'm gonna make panels that are nice. And check this out. Dirty. Let's see, it goes right up. Stay, stay. It goes right up the window tracks. Rolls down real easy. It doesn't roll down when you push on it. See, we got a little chip right there. I didn't want that to turn into a shatter. So that's it for me tonight. I'm going in. Tomorrow we'll get back on this. Finally got the drum off. I had to cut it and split it. As soon as I did it, it came right off. Now, I don't feel that bad about ruining that drum because you can see, if you look carefully in there, well, maybe you can't see. It was in bad, bad shape and it's really thin. This one is just as bad. See, it's real rough. It chipped off this corner, which is fine because that part doesn't even, that's the edge of the, the shoe anyhow. <sighs> Hopefully I've gotten it flat again. We'll see. I can get new drums, but they're 50 bucks a pop. So that's a little out of my budget right now. So I'm going to put this one on and see if it doesn't sit on there flat. Hopefully it does. I got kind of beat up around the, the nut holes. All right. Got the seat out. Unfortunately, I had to cut the brackets that held the seat in, except for that one, because I was able to get that bolt out. These other bolts wouldn't come out. So, now, people will argue that floor mats, rubber floor mats are better than carpeting. And I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again, and here's the example. The floors really aren't too bad in this car. I'm not gonna say they're good, but they're not too bad. The floor is in the Savoy over there, which leaks like a sieve because the cowl's rotten. It still has floorboards in it. it. The floorboard behind the driver's seat's gone, about that bad, but it had carpet in it. This car had rubber floor mats. And as you can see, I've just barely started cutting. It's all rot. What happens, the carpet soaks up water like a sponge and the horsehair sound deadener carpet padding but the difference was with carpet it breathes and the water will eventually evaporate and dry up rubber floor mats that stuff stays wet forever ever and ever and it does this so while this car has no the frame rails are completely gone in the bottom this one they're all solid some of these flanges here where I'm going to weld the new floorboard to are kind of thin, which isn't great. For instance, here's a good, a good point. This car, the doors open and close just fine. The only thing holding it together really is this rocker. And the rocker's solid. Just the floorboard part. Like this part, you can't really hardly see, is galvanized. And it's not rusty at all. It's just the floorboard part. This car, on the other hand... I noticed yesterday, every time I opened that door over there, it got harder and harder to open. And then now I don't even think it'll close. This car is up on stands, not very well. 
see this door doesn't want to cooperate. Let's push it down there. See, it was opening up just fine. I'm going to try to get that gauge pod put in that car. We're going to see. Hopefully, I don't have to pull the whole dashboard. But anyway, my point was the frame on this one's completely rotten. Even if the floorboard sheet metal isn't. And the rocker itself is rotten. And so I think having it up on the, the um, jack stands, the car is kind of folding. So we'll see if it doesn't break in half sitting there. Anyway, so I'm cutting all this out. My plan is to run angle iron across where the seat bolts in. And I'm going to do it probably to those seats that I have over there, even though I'm going to have to, probably not, because if I bolted them to the floor, they'd be too low. I'm going to have to build something. But that's my plan, is to run them across for strength, maybe. And I'm going to use, that is a Volvo 245 roof. It's nice flat metal, it's thick metal. I'm going to use that to make the floorboards. You can buy floorboards, which I don't think are quite big enough. They might be, but it's just these two footwells. You might be able to get these two, but you can't get full halves. And even if you could, I couldn't afford it. I'm just about done spending money. So, yeah, I'm going to get these things out of there. Hopefully I don't light everything on fire. I got a bucket of water over there just in case. I'll go ahead and get this big chunk out and that big chunk out, and then I can start somehow. On to the next. All right. So that's as far as I got. Chop the floor out here, here. Um, I still got to cut it out there and get all the thin pieces off of the flanges and such. Uh, I'm going to stop right there for now. I need to get the vacuum in here and suck out all this rat poop. Last night I couldn't sleep, so I came out here on a wild hair. And I started messing with the dash. And I was able to get the, the gauge pod out. This, <clears throat> this is a speedometer cluster, gauge cluster, for a 65, 64, 63 dart. Maybe 63, I'm not sure. Anyway, it's for one of those. I was just gonna, kind of curious to see if it could be used inside this, and no, it can't. It's too long. Um, but they're in here. So... On the next video, I'll detail some of that. I like my seat. But that's it for this video. Um, I've already got a couple things filmed for the next video. I just didn't want to leave you guys hanging without anything to watch. So, enjoy.